Hello students, welcome to Learner's Planet. Let us continue with the chapter Diversity in Living Organisms. This is the 16th theory session of this chapter and here we will continue with the subclassification of animals. In the previous session we have discussed about the uh, subclassification of animals. I give you brief introduction that how these animals are classified depending upon their uh, uh, body organization, then presence of uh, body cavity uh, or the type of cavity present in them, then on the basis of its uh, uh, body symmetry, then development from the germ layers, right? All these basic features are compared and thus with the developing complexity, these organisms are subclassified, right? In the last session, I explained the basic features of the phylum Porifera. Now, in today's session, I am going to discuss about the basic features of the next phylum that is Coelentalata and later I will compare the features of these organisms uh, that is a group Coelentalata with the group Porifera. So, let us uh, proceed with the session. So, this phylum Coelentalata, uh, it is again comprised of two terms here. What are they? Uh, seal and then Antarata. So, seal means hollow or it means cavity, right? And uh, enteron, it means gut or intestine. So, these organisms, they are uh, showing some type of cavity in a intestinal region. And therefore, they are, uh, uh, they are belonging to this particular group that is seal and tarata. Right? The name is coming from this particular meaning of the word. Now, this, uh, this group <coughs> is also known as Cnidaria. Now, this Cnidaria, uh, you know, in your exams, uh, question can come in any way. They can ask you about the features of Cnidaria or Cilentarita, anything. So, don't get confused at all. For the single uh, term, there are many different names also. Right? So, just don't get confused. You must know these basic informations. Anyway, so these organisms that belong to uh, group Coelentarata, they are having some specific features, right? And those particular features uh, make them place in this group, right? In other ways, we can uh, terms we can say it like this. Uh, first feature that we are going to compare is the habitat. So the organisms which belong to group Coelentarata, they are uh, living in the aquatic region. That means their habitat is the water body, right? And that uh, water, it can be either fresh or marine. It can be a saline water or the fresh water, right? Uh, you know, <coughs> other organisms, they are also aquatic. As in the earlier, uh, earlier session, I have discussed that poriferans, even they are aquatic, but they all are marine. And I'm not saying that all marine organisms, they will go in uh, uh, these uh, uh, porifera or likewise. But these are the typical features. And definitely, uh, this uh, along, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, this uh, feature alone cannot become the base to classify the organisms. As you know, Sir Aristotle, he has also classified the organisms, right? As the aquatic or terrestrial and so on. But now we know that in the same habitat, different types of organisms are also there. So, over there in that particular uh, uh, classification system, there were some limitations, right? And that's why nowadays, uh, five kingdom system is studied at a broad level. So, uh, in this uh, system, according to that, we have we found that what? Animal, they are having different phylums and sealant areta is one of a kind. Uh, beside this feature, these organisms, they can be either solitary or they can be col colonial. What I mean by this is that these organisms lead their life as a solid, in a solitary way. That means, uh, as a single individual in an independent way. Right. Or they may live as a colony. That means, uh, in a group. Uh, they are living together. Right. Uh, besides this, uh, depending on this, now we can say that uh, either they can be now free living or they can be sedentary. Some of them can be sedentary also. Uh, for example, I can say like Hydra. Hydra is a solitary free living organism. 
right and on the other hand if i compare it with uh, corals corals they also belong to silentarata now these corals they are colonial and they are sedentary now you understand what we mean by solitary colonial free living and sedentary right these are some basic terms that you must understand further uh, these organisms they are having the radial symmetry their body symmetry is uh, uh, radially symmetric uh, i'm sorry the body design is radially symmetric right what does it mean it means that uh, the organisms uh, uh, when we cut or uh, divide them in any plane right uh, then each part is going to be similar to the another one that is what we mean by the radial symmetry in the earlier session i have already explained you along with the pictures and all details that what this radial symmetry actually means right uh, for now i can just remind it with the help of one picture or one diagram here see uh, if you just uh, see this structure radial means of uh, and the uh, through the radius right so let us make this circle here it is like this in this circle what happens whenever you cut in any plane you will see that all these sections they are symmetric uh, it is going uh, out of alignment i'm sorry for that but if you just uh, uh, imagine if you cut it in through any plane you can see that all these parts are symmetric to others right so such type of symmetry is known as the radial symmetry and in these organisms the radial symmetry is found if you observe the hydra and you divide it through any plane right uh, in that case of course radially right so you will see that these sections they are symmetric to each other fine uh, further uh, they are uh, acellulomate and diploblastic now what does it mean acellulomate means a uh, true cavity is absent right and diploblastic means that the development or the tissues are developed from two germ layers this is what these two terms means actually right uh, in this case i can say that a true uh, silomic cavity all throughout the body is actually absent now uh, in this case i must uh, uh, mention one point here that uh, uh, they are having a cavity in the reduced ridge in the reduced form uh, that means what it means that the cavity is present inside their body but it is limited uh, it is limited to only intestinal region and this is the re reason why these organisms they are known as coelenterate a uh, question may come why this name is given to these organisms this reason is that because coelom or, or the cavity is uh, uh, limited only to the gut region right so uh, all throughout the body the true cavity is absent so they must be categorized or they must be known as the acellulomate organism now the diploblastic as i said that uh, the development is taking place through two germ layers well i would like to explain or elaborate this point uh, in a very uh, brief manner let me tell you or sh uh, show you see they they are diploblastic definitely uh, because they are made up of two layers of cells right the germ cells of course the outer layer is known as the ectoderm or it is also known as the epidermis this ectoderm or epidermis it makes the body wall of these particular organisms right and the inner layer is known as the endoderm uh, in these organisms even it is known as the gastrodermis and this gastrodermis or uh, endoderm it forms the inner lining of the body you know why i have mentioned this point here it is because uh, the question may come that whether ectoderm endoderm or ectoderm or mesoderm or which two layers are present or development is taking place from which two layers that question generally comes in the uh, mind of some of the students so i have just clarified that point that the two layers are ectoderm and the endoderm and the outer one is making the body wall and the inner lining is produced by the uh, inner layer that is gastrodermis or endoderm and these two layers ecto and endoderm 
they are uh, not having the space in between they are glued together uh, they are glued together through a gelatinous layer and that layer is known as mesoglea and uh, <coughs> the uh, body cavity is actually limited in the gut region and that is known as the gastrovascular cavity so if a question comes like uh, gastrovascular cavity is present in which organism one of the example is hydra and uh, of course is be it belongs to which group the uh, coelenterata so now let us see other features well from this discussion it must be very clear that uh, they are showing the tissue level of organization initially in the earlier group porifera they were not showing this tissue level of organization uh, or i can say that it was just minimized right it was a, there was a minimum tissue which was uh, differentiated or which was produced over there but in these organisms now the, the differentiation of cells into tissue is observed uh, the next point is about the exoskeleton uh, in these organisms that is uh, those which belong to coelenterata uh, generally exoskeleton is not present fine uh, but in some organisms it is present and uh, you know in which type of organisms like the corals coral is a group right so in corals the exoskeleton is present which is made up of lime right uh, next is about the tentacles now you must be knowing that in some organisms those which belong to coelenterata these tentacles are present and these tentacles they are having the structures which are known as the nematocyst these nematocysts they are actually uh, helping in the uh, capturing they help in capturing the uh, other organisms or i can say that they actually uh, release some chemicals which is going to paralyze the prey so this is how they are able to capture the or they are uh, these are helping in capturing the uh, these uh, other living organisms right besides this in these organisms the nervous system is present of course it is beginning here and is of primitive type uh, what we mean by this uh, primitive type it means that uh, the developed brain or the cord or the nerves all that are not developed over there uh, but we can say that uh, the system or a network of nerve cells are present which is helping in the control and coordination processes in these organisms so nervous system is present but is very simple and is in the primitive stage right further uh, they are uh, of course they are reproducing uh, they show the reproduction each living organism uh, they reproduce right so in these organisms generally they reproduce by the asexual mode of reproduction and which type of asexual mode is followed it is usually either fragmentation or it is uh, uh, budding right commonly you know very well examples like uh, hydra corals all they reproduce by the budding process uh, or the fragmentation right uh, in the case of hydra instead of fragmentation they are able to show the uh, regeneration uh, as they are little bit having a uh, more complexity as compared to other lower organisms fine uh, of course in some organisms sexual reproduction is also observed besides all these features the other organs which are uh, involved in the different life processes are actually absent like respiratory organs or digestive organs these organs are absent so all these life processes it takes place in a very simple manner fine uh, now it is a time to uh, understand or follow some of the examples and let us see some pictures also so students uh, common examples as i am continuously to repeating uh, throughout the session so here are the pictures of the same like hydra coral sea anemone and so on there are many examples of this group right uh, you can see these structures corals how beautiful they are looking isn't it the sea anemone right uh, sea anemone you can see that what we exactly mean by the radial symmetry here 
isn't it? Uh, if we cut it or if we try to divide it in any plane, any plane in the sense, either we cut it like this, right, or in this way, right, or from central line to like this, and we observe that this section is almost similar to this another, right? So all these uh, segments, they are symmetric in nature. So this is how uh, what we ha this is how I can explain the radial symmetry with respect to this diagram, right? The another example is the hydra. Of course, it is not shown here, but uh, I can try to show you a handwritten uh, hand drawn uh, diagram here, okay? Uh, although it is, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, this diagram is shown here and uh, although it is not very clear, but definitely I can explain you the basic parts which are present here in this diagram, right? And that can actually help you in understanding the concept also. Fine. Of course, this organism is a hydra and this basal part, this is known as the foot, right? Then this outer wall as I have highlighted here with the blue color. Right, this part is known as the epidermis. Now, epidermis, of course, it is related to which part? That is, it is developed from the ectoderm. Then, besides this, this red, uh, red, uh, the part which is highlighted with the red color, uh, this is the internal layer. Right, it is known as the gastrodermis, or of course, you can uh, label it as the endoderm also. Right. Then comes the uh, this internal part, right? The space between these two layers. Now this space is actually not empty. It is filled with the specific uh, cementing material, uh, the tissue. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the part which is known as the mesoglea. And then the next is internal cavity, which is of course restricted to which part? Uh, to the uh, intestinal or the gut region. And this cavity in this organism is known as the gastrovascular, I'm sorry, gastrovascular cavity, right? Uh, further, in the top region, you can see this structure, right? This part is known as the mouth and uh, further they are having the tentacles and that uh, fact is known to you, right? So these uh, structures, they are known as the tentacles and further these uh, uh, tentacles they are provided with the stinging cells right and these stinging cells help in uh, uh, capturing the prey fine so this is how this organism is shown here in this diagram and of course uh, uh, such type of diagrams uh, they are asked in your exams to draw as well as to label it Right. So now let us come back to the uh, main session or the, I'm mean, sorry, uh, let us come back to main document. Well, all these are the basic features of this particular uh, phylum that the seal and tanita. And of course, I've shown you the examples and the pictures also. Now, uh, before proceeding or uh, before moving to the next phylum, I'd like to show you the comparison between the seal and tanita and the porifera. You know, these are these two groups are the lower most group, right? They are known as the lower animals. So, let us compare and then we will move to the next class. Uh, I'm sorry, the next phylum. So, here I have picked some basic features so as to compare these two groups, right? Uh, the very first feature is the habitat. I said that Porifera and Celentarita, they both are aquatic. Now, for Porifera, it is uh, required to mention that these are marine. They live in the saline water. Whereas Celentarita, it is also aquatic, but it is found in marine water as well as in the uh, fresh water. Next is the habit. These organisms like Porifera, they are sedentary. Right, and they are sedentary means what? They are always attached to the uh, uh, this uh, uh, some substratum. Whereas Celentarita, it can be either sedentary, right, or it can be free living also. Fine. And besides that, it may be colonial or it may be solitary. It may lead a solitary life also, right. So these are the basic things that we must compare here. Uh, besides this, if we compare the symmetry, they these Poriferans they are asymmetric in nature. 
that means they are having irregular body shape or the body structure but celentarata they show the radial symmetry from each plane uh, they look similar or they are having equivalent design uh, in the uh, different uh, i mean when observed from uh, through the different planes right then comes the body organization so porifera it is the most primitive organism and uh, they are having a cellular body organization and what is meant by this acellular it means that they are multicellular but the body is not differentiated into the tissues or into the other uh, higher organized forms right uh, next is celentarata so they shows the tissue grade of organization further uh, regarding body cavity both these organisms are acelomate now of course we can mention these points along with this acelomate character that uh, the, uh, the true cavity is not present but a sort of cavity which is present in these porifarins and that cavity is known as spongocele whereas in the case of celentarata uh, they of course they are acelomate but uh, in them uh, some sort of cavity is uh, found in the intestinal region or in the gut region right and that particular cavity is known as the gastrovascular cavity uh, or even you can call it as a celenteran right then comes the germ layer so uh, germ layer or we can say the development from the germ layer porifarins uh, they are acellular right that means they do not show any development uh, i mean a sort of diploblastic or triploblastic development right they are developing from the uh, cells itself or they are leading a cellular life only so tissue formation is not there hence these diploblastic or triploblastic could not be mentioned with the porifarins celentarata in them the tissues are developed from two germ layers right or body parts are uh, uh, developed from two germ layers and therefore such type of development is known as a diploblastic right then comes the exoskeleton in the case of porifera uh, the hard cover is observed body is covered with hard hard cover and that is which is known as the spicules and these spicules they are made up of either silicon or they may be calcareous or they may be proteinaceous depending upon the type of organism fine uh, in the case of celentarata the exoskeleton is usually not present but it is limited to some types only like it is present in corals right and here it is made up of lime uh besides this the other features are there like uh, reproduction or digestive system so those things are not well developed like uh, digestion it is intracellular and it is simple so in this table i have just compared the basic features uh regarding digestion i can say that the digestive organs uh, or these uh, things are not uh, developed in these cases uh even it is true for the respiratory system or the uh, excretory system all these parts are not developed right and regarding uh, re reproduction these both organisms both groups they are reproducing by the asexual method commonly and that method is uh, in porifera it is commonly a method that is known as fragmentation in celentarata fragmentation is observed regeneration is observed then the uh, budding is also observed right and uh, even they can show the sexual reproduction also fine so these are the this is a basic comparison between these organisms uh further in the uh, further we have to uh, study the different features of the next group and that next phylum is which one it is uh, platyhelminths right and that is uh, actually having a, a little bit more complexity as compared to these organisms and what type of complexity is there that we will observe or we will study in the next session so till then thank you so much Have a nice day. Goodbye.